Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. President Trump rejects claims he disrespected a grieving military family as a Florida Congresswoman stands by her account of what happened. I'm Seth Lemon in New York with more coming up. And just when we thought fire season was behind us, high winds in western Montana caused new blazes to flare up. Where that's happening, that's just ahead. Our top story for you now, President Trump is refuting claims that he was disrespectful during a phone call to the family of a fallen soldier. The congresswoman and the family member who heard that conversation firsthand, though, are standing by what they heard. CBS's Seth Lemon has our latest. Wednesday was a day of he said, she said, pitting President Trump against Florida Congresswoman Frederica Wilson. Didn't say what that congresswoman said. Didn't say it at all. She yeah. knows it. At issue, the condolence call the president made to the widow of Army Sergeant LeDavid Johnson. He was one of four soldiers killed in action in an ambush in Niger on October 4th. For a second day, Wilson insisted the president made an insensitive comment. I heard him say, well, he knew what he was signing up for, but it still hurts. Sergeant Johnson's mother has confirmed the congresswoman's account. The president insisted via tweet he has proof to the contrary. He is not the proof. We are the proof. I regret that I did not record it. The White House didn't specifically refute those exact words were said. Press Secretary Sarah Sanders says she took issue with the congresswoman and the press for portraying the call as anything but sincere and respectful. Um, and I think it frankly is a disgrace of the media to try to portray uh, an act of kindness uh, like that and that gesture and to try to make it into something that it isn't. The father of Dustin Wright, another soldier killed in the ambush, told CBS News that the president called him too. He said the call went well and described Mr. Trump as cordial in offering condolences. Seth Lemon, CBS News. Now, the White House Chief of Staff John Kelly says that he is disgusted that dealing with military deaths has now become politicized. Kelly's son, who was killed in action in Afghanistan a few years ago, has never mentioned the president as a part of the row over with phone calls to Gold Star families. So we'll be hearing a lot more about this. Um, I want to talk a little bit about some of the sunshine that we're expecting today. Lots of sunshine today, and you better get out and enjoy it if you want to, because we're not going to see it for a couple of days yes. after that um, change in store mm. for our Friday. But uh, like you said, get out and enjoy it today. Here's what it looks like out there right now. Clear skies for the most part. It's beautiful. We do have some windy conditions, though. Look at the variety of temperatures ranging from 23 in West Yellowstone to 58 in Livingston. We do have some gusty winds to talk about with that sunshine, though, Missy. Stick around and have that detailed forecast from the Billion Auto Weather Patio in 10 short minutes. Thank you so much, Chet. Now 633. The Bozeman City Commission says yes to the controversial Black Olive apartment proposal. Our own Morgan Davies was at that special meeting where the vote was taken and files this report. Before the commissioners cast their vote again, we heard from those concerned about the sprawl and not having places for young workers in Bozeman to live. Our town has grown and it will inevitably continue to grow. If we, if we can all agree that smart growth is the best way to achieve our successful future, then let's move forward in that manner. I've lived here 12 years, but that doesn't provide me any more or any less voting stock than somebody that moved here yesterday or somebody that's lived here 50 years. Bozeman has always been a welcoming place, accepting of new ideas and growth, which is exactly what the Black Olive represents. Still, there was a large amount of people against the project, whether it be a negative effect on the neighborhoods around it or the architecture. I oppose the building on aesthetics. The building is dark and foreboding in its plan. And 20 years from now, people will not be interested in this kind of building. Well, if you made this building, scaled it back three stories, adequate, uh, provided adequate parking, there would have never been the opposition that he's been faced with now. Commissioners did make a motion to change the design of the building. The amendment would make the building look more like four stories with a further back offset towards the top, and it would also be made of different materials. The amendment. The amendment to the motion passes, passes five zero. zero. Reporting from City Hall, Morgan Davies, MTN News. In other news, in the mining city this morning, a man remains jailed in connection with the standoff in Butte from Tuesday night. 
Police arrested 29-year-old James Wasson after he allegedly hit a friend's hid in a, red, a friend's residence off of South Montana Street on Tuesday evening after fleeing from police and threatened to shoot police. Wasson eventually surrendered and after a three-hour standoff. It turned out the best case scenario. It turned out no one got hurt. He did have a self-inflicted wound, uh, but other than that, no one else got hurt. Uh, no neighbors got hurt. Now, police say that Wasson has a long history of run-ins with the law. Montana has received an extension from the Department of Homeland Security as it works to get in state compliance with the Real ID Act. The extension runs for a year until October of 2018. Now that means Montana residents can still use their current ID for domestic travel at least for one more year. The Real ID Act is a series of standards for the issuance of identification cards and driver's licenses. People without the Real ID compliant IDs are barred from entering some federal facilities and would have needed additional identification to board commercial airplanes as of next year. In 2007, Montana lawmakers passed legislation preventing the state from complying with the Real ID Act. The 2017 legislature changed all that. It doesn't impact anybody's travel at this point. Um, anything that they could do now or yesterday, they can continue to do and shouldn't worry about it. And what you know, Motor Vehicle Division will continue to do at this point is communicate those timelines now that we have a firm one-year extension to continue with our, our implementation of Real ID. Now, the state of Montana plans to issue Real ID compliant credentials by January of 2019. Residents will have the option of choosing a Real ID compliant identification. It costs $25 if it is during a license renewal period and $50 if it's outside a renewal period. And a Republican candidate in Montana's 2018 U.S. Senate race, race has put in another quarter of a million dollars to his own campaign. Big Sky businessman Troy Downing reported this week that he loaned his campaign $250,000 late last month. Now that's on top of a $100,000 loan that he made to the campaign earlier this year. Downing is one of six men running for the GOP nomination to challenge Democratic U.S. Senator John Tester next year. Downing's money made up about 70% of his total campaign funds of $492,000, which this year is more than any other Republican in the race so far. He's received about $140,000 in donations to his campaign. Senator Tester has raised nearly $8 million for his reelection campaign and had a $5.4 million in the bank as of three weeks ago. Now, the GOP Senate primary is still nearly eight months away, so more to hear on this. And Pondera County Sheriff Carl Suda has until next Monday to submit a response after a petition to revoke his title was approved earlier this month. Suda had five days to resign after the signatures were approved. The clerk and recorder said that Tuesday was the fifth day and now the process will move forward. Suda's submitted response will be printed on voter ballots. The recall election is set to take place in roughly two months pending approval from the Secretary of State. Pandera County residents will then vote on either yes or no on whether or not to recall Sheriff Suda. And the extreme windstorm that swept through northwest Montana on Tuesday toppled trees and knocked out power to thousands, but also brought, back, brought us back to somewhere where we thought we just left, fire season. MTN's Nicole Miller reports on two that broke out following that windstorm. Smoke could be seen billowing above treetops near Foy's Lake Wednesday morning. The Deer Run fire, estimated at roughly 40 acres, is one of at least eight reported fires following an extreme windstorm that swept through the region Tuesday. The Deer Run fire is the only one that's on private property that's in the vicinity of structures, but there's been no evacuation orders and none of the structures are directly threatened. All of the fires are being managed by a type three incident command team. The team is composed of about 70 personnel, heavy equipment and type two helicopters. Actively suppressing these fires is the number one priority for fire managers and they are strategizing here near the Foy's Lake fire where they've staged a camp. Right now their focus is the Deer Run fire with the weather forecasted coming in through the weekend with the precipitation, it really is going to stop the growth of these fires and let the firefighters get a good handle on getting containment lines around them. 
The fires are believed to be human caused from slash piles and debris burns that were started last week when conditions allowed. If you're going to be debris burning, pile burning, be a little more cautious. Know that we have dry fuel conditions and like yesterday's winds, if they do escape, make sure that you've got proper tools on hand such as water, shovels, etc so that you can contain it as quick as possible and call resources immediately. Reporting in Kalispell, Nicole Miller, MTN News. Now the DNRC is asking the public to minimize traffic in fire areas so firefighters can respond to these new flare-ups. And dry and windy conditions are causing problems in Blaine County where three fires ignited since Tuesday. The first fire was reported approximately two and a half miles south of Harlem among, along the Milk River. Harlem and Fort Belknap fire departments were called out to the fire, but due to those extreme winds, the fire burned about 50 acres of irrigated land and baled hay. The fire was contained during late morning hours and continued to be monitored for hot spots during the day today, as of yesterday. Second fire was reported northeast of Turner. Now that fire destroyed two buildings and a homestead from approximately 82 acres. Third fire was reported within Fort Belknap, uh, Belknap Reservation, and that fire was handled solely by the Fort Belknap Fire Department. And with all your help, Montana Television Network and the Montana Community Foundation has now collected almost $458,000 with help of wildfire relief funds. Applications are open, and you can apply for money from the MTN Montana Wildfire Relief Fund. Money from that fund will be allocated to volunteer fire departments, fire districts, communities, and individuals all impacted by wildfire season. Again, to apply, just head on over to our websites, kbzk or kxlf.com. It is time for a quick break. Up next on Montana This Morning, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety is out with the latest round of crash tests. What you need to know is up next. But first, we check in with our friends in New York City to see your headlines right here at 7. Good morning ahead on CBS This Morning. New details on the deadly ambush of American troops in Niger and why the patrol did not have enough backup. And our conversation with Bruno Mars, the success of his world tour, and the one person in the audience that always makes him a little nervous. We'll see you at 7 o'clock on the dot.